Well, hello everybody. This is Krista Lynn, and I want to thank you for joining my channel. I'm trying to balance the camera on my stall right now, so sorry about any movement. So today, I'm actually kind of nervous, because today I'm going to talk to you guys about something that's um, very, very dear to my heart, um, a lifelong passion and pursuit that I've had being born with the natural ability and that's to work with animals and I've shared with some of you guys that I'm an animal behaviorist I've been training horses um, actually since I was 13 years old and uh, I had many many wonderful animals in my life that have taught me probably my most valuable lessons so right now I want to talk to you guys about this because many of the astrology channels including myself have been talking about the upcoming energies that are going on up in the sky. All right, we are in the middle, in the in the building pressures that we have: Jupiter in Cancer, Pluto in Capricorn, um, Uranus in Aries, opposing Mars and Libra, all at 13 degrees. And you know, there's there's a lot of anticipation. And there's a lot of different theories. And if you listen to the old school astrologers, you know, there's a little bit of that, ooh, let's look at history. Let's look at evolutionary history and see what happened and what could be happening. And, you know, we've been feeling some little earthquakes going on. We feel the shifts. The energy is brewing. It's building. How do we get through it? And so today, I want to share with you my two cents of how to get through it. I think everybody's heard what it is. And if you guys want to order a personal reading with me, I can go into specifically what it does it mean for you and how is it specifically, intricately <laughs> lighting up your personal natal chart. So that's something I definitely am hoping to be able to help you guys with because I am so fascinated by it. And I'm offering some, some videos right now, guys, five minutes, 15 minutes, and I send these videos to you. And they're very reasonable because I want you guys to have them. And I can offer this as a great service to help you get through these radical changes. And I'll be in each video I talk about the year ahead, specifically in your chart. So check out my website and check out those great offers. But let's get back to even if you know nothing else, even if you don't even know your birthday, <laughs> you feel... It's something's going on. There's shifts and changes. What does that mean for us? Are we victims of these changes? Are we passengers in a car that's driving off cliff? Or do we have a say-so in what happens with our life? Can we drive the car? And I believe that we can. But I first believe that we have to know who we are what our intentions are and what we're looking for in our lives. If you are completely have no idea and you're living in fear right now or resentment or um, just deep issues that are unresolved and you don't know how to get through them, then you need to start on this path. Okay, learning to first just identify it. First just say, yeah, that's me. Once that happens, the messages will start pouring in for you in every which way, including this video might be one of those messages. You might turn off the video, turn around, and, and a song plays, and it speaks to you in a way that, that was strange. You know, there's messages everywhere, and so many times we don't pay attention. So today, I want to, um, I want to show you how I work with my horse's energy and how I can create um, erratic energy which then she will mimic how I can draw her back to me with a quiet and peaceful place and then she will uh, mirror those things and it's a really fascinating um, therapy work in fact some of you guys know I'm going to be I've been talking about it, and it's coming this summer. I'm going to be opening up equine therapy classes or communication classes where you can come out 
and work with the horses hands-on and get connected to your energy. The horses will teach you how to do that. So I have so many exciting things, you guys, and I don't want to make this video all about all of the things, but I do want you guys to know I'm, I've got some really cool things coming together, and I'm just so excited to be able to share them with you guys. So that's that. But um, let's get started. So what I'm going to do... I'm waiting. Oh, here's Cliff. Oh, good. Here's my here's my cameraman. Come on over, Cliff. Come on over. I'm a, I'm a, there's my Cliffy. <laughs> Cliff Van Kreitz. Oh, Scorpio Rising. I always have to tell them that. Sorry, they like that. I do better on the other side of the camera. I know, I know. Well, you're gonna be on. I just want to show them you came up. You walked up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is Cliff and I are gonna take a break for a second and set up set myself up and just start to show you guys what this looks like and explain this level of connecting to your energy and how to start practicing it. It's a practice. Horse chi. Horse chi. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. We're setting up the cam. Cliff Van Kreitz. Oh. Scorpio rising. I always have to tell them that. Sorry, they like that. I do better on the other side of the camera. I know, I know. Well, you're going to be on. I just want to show them you came up. You walked up. Okay, so what we're going to do is Cliff and I are going to take a break for a second and set up, set myself up and just start to show you guys what this looks like and explain this level of connecting to your energy and how to start practicing it. It's a practice. Horse chi. Horse chi. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. We're setting up the cam. Okay, so I'm back right now, and I'm waiting for my buddy Cliff, and he's going to come for, go get his guitar, and he's going to bring over his guitar and just play some music. You know, I just want to encourage you guys. It's about nurturing yourselves and being creative and being true to yourselves, and that's where the healing is. Um, we have a lot of transits going on right now. Many of you know about this awesome Neptune and Pisces. And some of you don't do as well with it. I love it, <laughs> but it makes me very creative. I want to hear music all the time. I want to see colors all the time. I want to be near the water. And those are the things that I'm doing that are inspiring me, inspiring me to write, inspiring me to stay balanced, because you know what? I'm feeling these energies a hundredfold. And if I don't take care of myself, these could turn into panic attacks. These can turn into a lot of inner stress and inner critical thinking, obsessive thinking, because there's a lot of energy in the air. Um, so these are the things that I do to try to help balance myself. And that's what I want to teach you guys right now, especially through the month of April. I want to help navigate you guys through staying calm. Okay? So here's the thing. When I work with horses, if I don't practice this method of being centered my horse will react off of my erratic energy so by working with horses I've trained myself over many 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 years mastering the art the beautiful art of communication with an equine with a prey animal these are prey animals so by nature okay I'm predatory I eat meat you know, we can eat meat. We can consume meat, whether we do or not. You see what I'm saying? And we hunt for our food. So typically, when we get in the presence of a horse, <laughs> I have to show you guys this. This is too cute. He wants to know what's going on. Here, hold on. Where are you? That's that's <laughs> that's Dakota, and he's he's my old boy. He's 22 this year, and I've had him since he was born. And he has a moon in Pisces, and I have a moon in Pisces. So it's a whole other subject. I do very in-depth astrological readings with animal behavior and animals. And pretty soon I'll be sharing more and more about that. And you'll be seeing that. Uh, it's a really cool project I'm working on right now. But in the meantime, in the meantime, what are we trying to say? What we're trying to say is we want to show you how to take a language and bring it to your real world. So your boss, you might go to work and your boss may have a very aggressive energy and you just makes you feel really uncomfortable or you feel like a child again or you've lost your, your, your core being when you're around that person. 
maybe it's a parent, you know, maybe you're an older adult, maybe you're in your 40s and you get around your parent and you feel like you're 10 years old again. When that happens, you're not connecting to who you are now as a person. You're not projecting that. And so you attract those relationships that create all that dysfunction. Okay, let's just call it whatever it is. Being around a horse, he will tell on you. He will tell if what you are projecting. And it's a safe place to practice this. It's a safe place to practice working on yourself because a horse is unconditional and they're just honest. They don't have any personal agenda. They'll just tell you, nope, that's not it. Because a horse has a soul connection, can have a soul connection with the human. If we tune into them, they will be like a mirror for us. And this can be a very um, healing and therapeutic opportunity. So I want to introduce this to you guys and see what you think. And I got Cliff here with his guitar because he's going to put some music in the background, which helps me get centered before I ever get around my horse. So let's just say you're having a communication problem with somebody. I keep going on this subject. But that's what this is about, is how to communicate and how to project what you want to project, how to be who you tru truly and authentically are. And um, how to do that again in a place that's safe okay so that's why equine therapy is so awesome all right so i'm just going to come on over here i'll start with dakota here a minute Cliff's just going to be playing some tunes in the background because we are the rockers we are the rockers We, it's our stage. It's, 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 it's our aesthetics. You know, the broken chair is, is part of the aesthetics. Let's see if the, how the horse does like the music. Oh, my God, this is so cool. You guys know Cliff's music is in all my videos, and he has a CD coming soon. <laughs> a recording. Hi, Dakota. He likes music. We're just going to do our thing. saying in my little introduction, horses have the ability to reflect who we are. Okay, so this horse and I already have a very long-standing relationship. We've known each other for 22 years, so he already knows me. He already knows he's predictable. You know, he knows my prediction. But because we do know each other so much, He also will reflect the energy that's going on inside of me. So right now, my heart's beating. Mm -hmm. Actually, like if I were to kind of say from a 1 to a 10 of adrenaline right now, I'm probably about a 7, okay. okay? So I need, before I can start really interacting on a really positive way with this horse, I need to drop my adrenaline down right now. And by using a tool like horses, martial arts, basketball, football, I don't care what it music. is. Music. Music. Yeah. Thank you. You have to be able to come bring your anxiety down. When your anxiety comes down, your creative mind opens up. That's why when we're dealing with anxiety or panic attacks, the reason why people are having them is this bursting of energies coming through the body, creating adrenaline, creating you know, confusion in the mind, and that's when the panic sets in and the fear sets in. So for me, all these years having horses, um, it's like it's been my one place in life that I could go that I had to do it. I had to calm myself down. I had to be responsible for my emotions during that time. And by training myself, every time I was around the horse to do that, it's become very therapeutic, very calming, 
and very necessary in my life. So again, whatever your outlet is, make sure you're doing it, especially during the month of April and going into the rest of the year because we've got, you know, we're, we're swimming through some storms right now. And my goal is, you know, I can focus on all the storms. We already know what they are in our lives. How are we going to be able to think clearly is we've got to find moments to bring this down. So right now, I would say he's pretty much reflecting that in me. He's com I'm coming down now to about a four. And he's at about a four, too. And I'll tell you why he's at a four is because his head is up. His head is up. Now, see, as I approach him <laughs> and I bring my hand down here, now my energy came up. And you see how he didn't like it? He's, he didn't like that. He's telling me, oh, you got erratic. We were kind of calm together. Did you notice that when we were calm, mm -hmm. he was giving, yielding to me that energy? <clears throat> it's the same thing with these erratic energies out there. They obey us. We don't have to obey them. We're not, we're not victims. We are victors. But if we aren't centered, we're not going to be able to harness that energy and use it for us. And that's where all the everybody's afraid what's going to happen. Even if we have an earthquake, We'll be calm enough to get into shelter, to figure out what to do. You know, we still have to function. If those things happen around us, they happen all the time. They've been happening from the beginning of time. But we still have to maintain this emotional control. So let's see what happens again. I'm going to bring him over here again. I'm going to ask him. Here's another factor, okay? You see I've got a little tension on this rope. We're having an argument right now. I've created tension, and he's, he's, he's opposing it. Okay, so we know about opposing energies. See, I'm also very bracy in my own body, so he doesn't really want to be in this space. He's telling me, can you calm down a little more? So what if I drop this down a little bit more? I change <laughs> my body language, and now I've invited him in. Mm -hmm. All by my projection of body language. And that's what I'm trying to share today, whether it's your boss, whether it's your child, whether it's all of those things. If we can control our centers, we can project our truth and it will be received with respect because it's coming from a place of solid balance without ego, without those things. I cannot have an ego with this horse at all. Okay. Now... I've known this horse a long time, 21 years, he and I have been together, and he never really has liked to be saddled. <laughs> so, because if you think about, you know, I'm getting ready to constrict energy, okay? This horse, let's look at him as just a big, gorgeous ball of energy with legs and a mane and a tail, okay? Just look at him as energy. It's what he is. He's, a, he's an energy ball. He is because his instinct as a prey animal requires him to be connected to the energies around him. We have human bodies that are that are more carnal and they have protectiveness so we can protect ourselves from energies or we can buck up against energies. These horses move with energy, good or bad. Okay. So this energy right here, this in his mind represents a confinement and but yet I see it as a tool for me and him to make a connection. So, I have to let him know that this is a good thing. I suggest, though, that he stay with me in little ways. But I'm not going to make him stay. I'm not going to give him the feeling that he has to stay. Okay, because if he has to stay, then that's fear. And I'm going to suggest as the leader that he does need to stay. Okay, so I'm going to flop this around. Now, he's coming in on me a little bit here. He's pushing on me. Okay, so... I'm going to set my boundary so you don't push on me. Okay, now he's coming out of my space, but he's looking. Oh, now he's like, all right, let's have a conversation. Let's go ahead and see if we can come to an agreement. See, he's participating now. Because I made my idea his idea. But I did it knowing what his idea was first. And I did it by suggestion, not force. Hey, try my idea. Okay, so now... And believe me, he's had a thousand saddles on. It's not that he's afraid, but I want you guys to see the little intricacies in what I'm talking about. 
every movement means something in human language or animal human language. So again, you know, when you're sitting there talking to someone, their body language means everything. But right now, this shoulder is kind of pre he's kind of pressing up on me and he's in my space right now. He's kind of letting me know that he might challenge me a little on this. So I'm going to suggest that he kind of get out of my space. Now see how he's still real heavy? He's not really in agreement about it. So I might need to create some negative electric energy. Basically not looking at him because he's not in trouble, just like the planets. They're not looking at us. We're not in trouble. They're creating electric energy to get us out of that space. You're not, you can't go in there. You keep trying to go in there. You can't go in there. So it gets really radic. Now I have a little, little more respect in this relationship. I have to have respect if I'm going to be the leader. Because even if I have this wonderful, incredible relationship, he is a prey animal that could, you know, I could fall off of me <laughs> and not even meaning to. So I have to lead this conversation for my own preservation. But I see him as a partner. So there's, and he'll always hold on to a little bit of his self-preservation that I also will respect. I'm not taking out their spirit, but I am saying we have to come to a common ground. So creating a little energy is not really bothering him too much. Okay, so you see how I had to get a little bigger at the end. Now, again, I'm just creating an energy. It'd be the same thing as if a tree branch fell off in front of him. Is he going to move away from that tree branch? Yeah. I'm kind of coming, asking him to come back into my space, and I'm going to create just a little bit of energy now. But because he knows I will create big energy, he respects the little energy. And when we can get in line and we can listen to the little messages so we don't have to have the big energy, there's little messages all along the path whispering in our ears that we can embrace. And right now, <laughs> I feel like he and I kind of have an understanding. So now I can invite him into my space and notice how he's much more respectful. He's not as bracy on me. So we just had a little argument, but nope, there was nothing personal to it. There was nothing personal to it. Okay? <laughs> you know, and so then it gives me more power to suggest ideas. And now this tells you when a horse is willing to put his head down, he has completely entrusted his being into my hand. Because when his head's down, he cannot run. And his survival instinct is gone. So as we, now he kind of got, came back with, hey, wait a minute, I'm not sure I'm willing to give it all. I said, all right, don't. It's okay. But if you do give it all, then I'll give it all. And we start having a deeper, more trusting relationship. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to be a clown? This is the clowny things he does. Hmm? That's when you have a good deal when they offer that to you. You know, people think, oh, what are you putting in their mouth? It's just a line of communication, but. He and I have such a connection that he trusts me to put that in his mouth. He feels safe with it because I don't, I don't use it as a torture device. I use it as a refinement tool to communicate with different parts of him. And so structure and refinement and confinements aren't all bad. We need those boundaries in life to perform. So what you're going to see today is that, is the combination of limits but yet beauty within them.